Howdy everybody. This is the video where I talk about the class I went to in Lee Summit, Missouri. Uh, the AEA puts on an avionics installation for experimental aircraft class. Everybody say hi. And I highly recommend it if you are building your plane. Um, even if you're putting in, like if you're having Stein or um, any of the other panel builder people, uh, do your avionics. I would highly recommend this class. It's like 600 bucks. It's not bad as for the amount of information you get for the cost. It is extremely good. Um, they have this great work area. You actually build uh, a harness, yeah, a bench harness, Those which is really nice. Really highly recommend it. Um, and I will show you the tools here in this first video that we use. Okay, first three and a half hours of um, experimental aircraft avionics installation stuff done. A whole lot of um, regulations and what you got to do and stuff. A ton of information. Holy crap. Um, so they started off and said it's kind of like, you know, feeding you with a fire hose. And that's exactly kind of what it is. Um, but very, very interesting. Very, very cool. I feel like I know a lot more now than I did before, and I'm only three and a half hours in, so we'll see how the rest of stuff goes. See ya. Okay, so here's the class. It's the EA, AEA website. Um, you can go under courses and then just look for the avionics installation for experimental aircraft class. Um, like I said, highly recommended. $619, I think, if you're not a member. Um, it's a three-day course that is very, very informative. Now, I did not get a whole lot of video um, on the second half of that first day. And the second half of that first day, we kind of went over um, the tools that would be required, the tools that we'd use, how to use them, and how to actually do this stuff. So while I show you the second day, me putting stuff together, um, I figured I would show you um, some of the tools that they would recommend. So the first one is a um, 3 30 seconds inch hex screwdriver. Um, and they recommend the Bond Hus BND 10605. I'll show you an image here. Um, they And it should be, um, I think I forget how long it is, but it needs to be long enough that you can put the um, screws and the 330 seconds is the size of all of the Garmin um, panel mounted stuff. So that's the size that you need for that stuff. Um, they also recommend having some like dental picks, you know, cheap little dental picks that you might get at Harbor Freight. Um, and then a screwdriver, a 12 inch long screwdriver, both the number one and the number two um, Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, because the 12 inches will reach the very back of the um, mounting brackets in the back. Um, other tools, some of the basic tools, um, uh, some wire cutters. They recommend the Hako CHP 170s. Um, some cable cutters if you have the cables. Um, I'll put some pictures of what they recommend here for cable cutters. Um, the wire strippers. Obviously, obviously, those are the ideal strip master ones, um, and they're expensive. But I do have to tell you, they are fantastic at stripping the wire. Um, sharp razor blades for pulling back the um, the wires that are together and shielded. Um, you'll need uh, razor blades or something sharp to cut the the plastic off. Um, a heat gun um, with a uh, wire attachment. Um, heat guns are pretty cheap. Finding the wire, the wire attachment piece um, is a little bit more difficult, but I'll show you some images of that. Um, a soldering iron um, with 60-40 rosin core solder. Um, and then some specialty tools like a D-sub crimper. Um, they recommend the DMC AFM-8. Um, there are gen generic ones out there, like the J-Ready ones, and then some generic ones. I'll show some pictures here. And then some specialty tools. So 
they recommend um, an insulated terminal crimper and they recommend the amp pro crimper 2 um, i'll show you a picture here of that one uh, and it was i do have to say i've i've had like some cheap you know harbor freight kind of crimping tools and some even some halfway decent somewhat crimping tools from like home depot or lowe's and they are nothing compared to that crimper it was amazing um and then they talked about just some consumables, some things that you'll, you know, you'll need, um, like uh, splices and insulated terminals and stuff like that. They also talked about uh, other specialty tools like a coax crimper, um, and you could get the different head for the other crimper for coax cable. Um, just you just got to make sure you have the right one, um, and then a coax stripper. Um, and they recommend the Greenlee 1255 LC CST um, coax stripper. And it was rather fancy and rather nice, just saying. Um, and then they, they talked about, you know, other things like butt slices and cables, uh, solder sleeves. Um, and then like wire, your mill spec wire and things like that. So those were all kind of talked about. Um, they said there are some other specialty tools, so like a pin insertion or extraction tool um, they talked about, and those are very delicate. So that's me right there on that video using a pin extractor tool. Um, the first one I had was broken already, and they're very, very tiny. You see me using the magnifying glass. Um, but you put them around the, the wire, you kind of slide them up until they stop, and then you can pull the whole thing out. It works well, but they recommend getting more than just one because they will break on you because they're very, very um, tiny and thin. So just FYI, get a few of those. Um, and then the heat streak printer, something you don't have to do, and it's not what we used in the class. Um, heat streak printers need to be able to do the one eighth size heat shrink tubes and the, those are expensive um, i'll show a couple picture or picture of one that i found that's not horribly expensive because some of them are in the thousands of dollars but it's not needed because you're going to um you can like print up on like just stickers or on paper what you want to have on the the wire itself and then you could just get clear heat shrink tube the one eighth clear heat shrink tube you get a big roll of it and just put that over the piece of paper and then heat shrink it on there works just the same so just fyi that is a, a valid option and it's what we did in the class and it worked perfectly fine and it's a much cheaper solution um, then like i said there was uh, solder sleeves um, and then actual wire and stuff like that all of that wire and stuff you can get from like aircraft spruce and other um, stores. Um, and then we went over like actually using some of that equipment, um, like how to set up the AFM eight, um, how to put in the little, um, the uh, positioners in the um, AFM eight. So it had, so it was right for the right pin and stuff like that. All very cool stuff. And then that was pretty much the end of that first day. We talked a little bit about um, shield termination and things like that. And um, I think I have a picture of shield termination. If not, I'll put one on here so you can see it. And that's pretty much the first day. Um, we finished up with that. And then the second day, we started doing our layout for um, our harness. And the layout for the harness Basically, what it is, is a, it's basically a uh, mocked up harness. So basically connecting um, five different Garmin pieces of equipment together so that they can communicate together and get power um, and how to actually, you know, measure it out, put it together and what you have to do. Um, and this is Aitor. He's a, he was in the class with me. Great guy. Um, he has a RV9 and he showed it to me and I'll show you probably in my next video for this class because I think I'm going to do it in two parts because it's rather long. Um, 
he took to, he took me and showed me his airplane and it was awesome so just thank you to him for doing that he was great um <clears throat> but he was showing me how to tie the um wax the wax wire tie stuff and it's pretty easy and i'll show a um quick little um image on how to do that i was excited i was the first one done but I did have an issue. So technically I wasn't the first one done because I had messed up two of the wires. They were in the wrong spot. So the guy behind me um, actually finished first. So just FYI. And so after you finished your harness, um, they'll hook it up to their little testing bench rack thing there. Um, and basically you start by hooking up your ground and your powers, um, and then you'll test that. You'll see that here in a quick second. Um, and the guy, the instructor of the class, I don't think I've mentioned his name. If I did, I, I'll say it again because he was fantastic. His name is Levi Self. You'll hear him talking and uh, walking through actually testing out the power in the ground here in a quick second. So we'll just ground this to the kiosk here. Volts because we're actually going to put power on it. And so we don't have anything connected. We'll mm -hmm. go ahead Only and the wires. plug this guy in. Now, I'll have you step, uh, well, to the front here. Okay. Go ahead and turn the master switch on. On? Okay. Yep. It's on. And what I'm going to do is have you push in circuit breakers one at a time. And I'm going to verify that we get voltage. We have no voltage there. So go ahead and push in your GDU circuit breaker. GDU, go. And we got power. Pull out the GDU. Out. Yep. And then this is your GSU. Go ahead and push it in. Good. Power. You can pull it out. Okay. Your GMU. Ready? Yep. You can pull it out. And your G5. Great. And then pull it back out. Okay. Uh, so you can turn the master switch off. Uh, you can actually push in all four circuit breakers now. And you're going to connect your harness up to the bench. So this is the GEA. We're not connecting to it at all in this class. Okay. So your GMU is here. Your CAN terminator is here. So that will go ahead and terminate your CAN. You've got a CAN terminator here as well. For the, for the G5. G5. Yep. And then G5. The GDU is connected to this 50 pin, mm -hmm. and then the GSU to the 9 pin there. So connect it up, and then we'll power up everything. Okay. So I passed the power test, um, and now I'm going to hook up each of those, the 9 pins and then the 50 pin connectors to their appropriate um, pieces of equipment. Now, I did have an issue um, and you will see that here in this next little video that I record of us actually checking the connections um, between each of the units, the GDU, GMU, oh, down. GSU, and G5. You do it while you record. That's so, fine. So, and then put the master switch on. Just hold the mini key down until you get configuration mode on the display. There you go. You can release. Well, it didn't blow up, so... Not yet. <laughs> and then you want to go to system information? You go to system information. Point two or so. All right. So the PFD is going to have a red X because it's flagging us that we don't have that configuration module that we talked about in the back shell. We, didn't, we don't provision for that in the class. So that is normal Acceptable. for the purpose of the class. In a normal installation, we would have that configuration module, or if we had this missing, we might have not installed it or miswired it. Okay. So you can select your secondary flight and switch, G5 there. Yeah. What we're looking at here primarily is that network error rate. If that's ever anything but zero, that would be an issue. Okay. So the G5 obviously is powered and ground are working because it's powered up, and the net can network's working. So you select your AHARs. And same thing here, we're looking at that CAN network error rate. Now, here is the first concern. You have that RS-232 connection to the AHARS, and it should say RS-232 port 1 right there. We'll come back to that. Okay. Um, your magnetometer, I'd go ahead and select there. 
uh, so your CAN network error is good and I don't see any issues. Now, the first thing we're going to do is actually check settings on this display. So go ahead and hit the bat key. Okay, second day of training was pretty awesome. Um, I did test my wiring harness and it passed. Well, the first time it did not pass. I had, I had reversed some pins. Um, but apparently that happens a lot. You mess up pins, you have to pull them out and then put them in the right spots. But fixed it and it passed, it worked. That's crazy stuff. Um, I do feel a ton more confident that I will be able to wire my plane successfully and it will actually work. Um, I am actually at the airport. I don't know if you can see the airport out there. Um, Aitor is a guy, he's in the class with me. He flew his RV-9 down and he showed it to me. I have some video I'll show you of his plane. It is pretty sweet. Um, an older RV-9, but nice. Um, and I hope that mine is just as good shoot if it's half as good I would be happy I think so that's the second day have fun talk to you later bye